All right, welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is June 1st, 2018, our end of the week uh, broadcast where we bring in our special guest, Henrik, the Danish GM's GSM channel. How are you doing tonight, Henrik? I'm doing very good, thank you. We're glad that you have joined us again, once again, for this fun-filled Friday I'm sure we have in store for you guys tonight, so stick around. Let's do a quick uh, space report real quick. Take a look at our solar wind conditions as we are actually are out of the storm conditions for now, but you wouldn't know that by looking at the solar wind speeds. Right now, we're sitting at 699.6 kilometers per second, and you put that to miles per hour, that's 1.5 million miles per hour with a density of 4.6. Uh, still looking at sunspot AR2712. Uh, it has de developed a beta gamma magnetic field that harbors energy for M-class solar flares. So I got to give hats off to the star man who from day one, as this bad boy was even not even across the eastern limb, he predicted that this had the potential for an M-class solar flare. And, you know, weirdly enough, this, this sunspot was decaying just 24 hours ago. This sunspot was decaying. So... Uh, we'll keep our eye on that as the sunspot number has increased once again up to 21 from 18. So AR2712 is hanging around for a little bit longer. And looking at our KP indices, uh, as you guys see, we are at a three right now. Earlier where we were at storm conditions. And however, that has subsided. Let's take a look at our SDO. And you see the corona hold that is giving us the fits right now that we are having with um the solar wind speed which is impressive i didn't quite expect it to top the 700 kilometers per second now i'm gonna go ahead and and scroll up real fast because up here on the grand solar minimum.com we do have um yeah so right now we we have seen the peak of this solar wind as it did touch 700 kilometers per second let's take a look at the proton influx and see if we've seen anything a bc type flares from ar2712 Right now, everything's kind of calm. Earlier today, it did look like we had a few potential B type C flares, but it has since subsided. So, but just interesting to check out, guys. Uh, we will keep our eyes on that AR2712, which is redeveloped and is strengthened and could uh, harbor energy for an M class flare. Now, we'll take a look at the TSI. Bear with me here, real quick. All right. We should have it there. So a little bit increase on the TSI reading as of May 22nd, 2018. It's risen just slightly to 1360.7369. So not much of an increase. We've been watching values right around 1360.69 for the past few days and slowly has went up just a little bit. And we got some volcanoes to talk about. Uh, just a couple I'm going to mention today. But uh, Mount Merapi seems to be the most active here recently. And this time we see an ash plume of 38,000 feet. Now we've seen previous uh, eruptions from this already, but residents living near the volcano are reminded not to enter the exclusion zone and are encouraged to remain calm. There is no need to evacuate as it is still safe. We do anticipate ashfall and residents are urged to be more alert. He said, adding that. Um, this airport that's out there is still open for flights. The height of the ash, uh, based on pilot report, is reaching. And like I said, this had a few of them that's uh, gone up pretty high. This is an active volcano. It's been doing this now for the past several weeks. And once again, thanks to the watcher for uh, great information. For more stats on this, we'll leave the link in the description. I'm going to see a little bit of video. Let's see what kind of video we got here. Henrik, volcanoes are just opening up everywhere right now. Yes, and uh, I think it was yesterday I saw that the Kilauea in Hawaii uh, in one hour, there was coming as much uh, lava that it could fill, you know, uh, like six football 
uh, feels in in one hour. I mean, that's amazing yeah, that's pictures, uh, and also the pictures I can see now on my little bill screen. Well, now it's gone. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, but I I think it's only the start. Unfortunately, I think we're gonna have a lot more, and I also think we're gonna have a lot more earthquakes. Yeah, and I'm showing a picture right now of uh, the Kilauea fissure that opened up and started spewing lava out today. And, you know, now they're saying this is a mandatory evacuation situation now. Uh, people are being told, if you stay here, uh, you will possibly be arrested. And here's what you were talking about right here. Hawaii residents hit by Kilauea's volcano's vigorous lava eruptions have been ordered to leave their homes within 24 hours or face possible arrest from police. Here are the latest mandatory evacuation zones mapped after officials warned lava flow speeds were speeding at a rate of six football fields an hour. That's incredible. That's 600 yards times three. That's over 1,800 feet. Big Island yeah. Mayor, uh, Mayor Harry Kim ordered the non-negotiable evacuation of a 17-block swath. And it's still, to me... I don't know about you. I, I might have left a little earlier than this. I think this is a pretty dramatic um, event, even though. Yeah, uh, and uh, I also heard that uh, there was up to 128 meters of uh, the lava was flowing, and some of the lava bump uh, that was uh, falling were the side of a refrigerator. You know, I would not be hit like one of those. Then you are gone. You know, you would not survive that. No, and, and this picture right here to the left says it all right there, like a lake of yeah. fire. Wow. Yeah, I didn't hear that one yet, so that's uh, that was definitely news for me. But yeah, they talk about how the Big Island's youngest and most volatile volcano has been in near constant eruption for 35 years. And I've shown some pretty amazing um, photos from the 6974 eruption, but this one's starting to become a little bit more epic than once believed. Now... There has been a lot of, um, I've seen people blow this map up and it looks bigger than what it is, folks. But keep in mind here to the right here where my cursor is. I don't know if you can see that. That's really, if you look at the big island here, it's it's a good size of the island. But these blown up pictures really make it look like it's a lot bigger than what it is. <clears throat> However, still lots of lava flow. And this map does continue to grow every time we see this. Uh, we'll leave the link in the description. Yeah, I would say uh, the worst problem is all the lava that's going to the sea, you know, because that is yeah. produce a lot of gases, you know. That's the biggest problem I see. I agree. And we've already talked about how we're now, you know, places in Guam are starting to get some of the downflow of this exhaust from this volcanic uh, eruption. So you're right. As time keeps going, it's going to be spreading further and further uh, east or west. Yeah, we'll go west. All right. Check out the watchers once again. Five were killed after an avalanche hits Babasur Top in Pakistan. Uh, it says, according to police reports, uh, six men from another area were traveling in a Jeep to the Babasur Top. Snow slid, hit their vehicle near the top, burying all of them. A rescue team compromised of locals and rescue. 1122 recovered two bodies and one injured man before nightfall. The rescue operation had been called off. The two bodies and the victims and that were in the injured were shifted to district headquarters hospital. Over the next 24 hours, though, the very hot, dry weather is expected in most parts of the country. And they are expecting some light rain, but... You know, here we are talking about avalanches one day, and it makes sense to me because I don't see anybody wearing a winter coat. So obviously, this is not a normal situation for them. And now we're talking about hot and dry weather the next day within 24 hours. So it's this, uh, this, this sudden change, this violent swing from hot to cold, just like here in the northeast part of the United States, where it felt like we went from a deep winter and then it got a little warm and then cooled off for most of may and then the last four days it's been super hot but forecast for monday we're looking at temperatures highs at 63 degrees so all right yeah, the this same goes uh, if i just may say you know the, the same goes for denmark because uh, the last uh, 
for five days have been so hot. Uh, but uh, in Monday, uh, uh, of course, when I was out on my bicycle, it, it was uh, pouring down with rain and there was thunder and, and lightning. And one thing I noticed was the size of the raindrops, you know. I, I thought, what in the heck? It was very, very big, you know. And I don't know, uh, because, you know, the hails are get, getting bigger. I don't know, uh, could raindrops, uh, I, I, I don't know so much about the raindrops. Absolutely, though. Uh, cosmic ray influx, you know, the number one ingredient for raindrops, if you can look it up in the dictionary, the encyclopedia, whatever, it tells you without particles, a raindrop is not possible. So when you're talking about highly charged particles that's inundating our atmosphere and, and continue to increase, absolutely it's possible for raindrops to be a lot bigger. I know Mari told me uh, the other day while I was away that uh, when they got rain, the the raindrops were huge they were marble size but it wasn't hail it was just really big water droplets but yeah that's possible yeah. due to cosmic rays and the particles that are in our atmosphere um so the more particles the, the the bigger the raindrop gets as it gets closer to the ground yeah and of course when i was out on my bicycle and then today you know it was so hot in denmark i mean you know i'm so neurotic you know so i cannot sit still for five minutes so i have to <laughs> around in the garden but then you know it was so hot so i thought okay i will sit down on a chair and then i'm sitting down and then i'm looking at my cat and my cat is just lying in the middle of the sun and is just looking up at, looking up at me you know oh daddy i love the heat oh daddy i love the heat and i'm just like my god are you a fucking crazy cat you know it's like 180 fahrenheit in the sun and your fur is on fire you know uh, <laughs> oh it's not me you know damn cats let me tell you um, yeah. a little quick story of my cat here at the house um i i'm gonna change his name to sir asshole but he, he wakes <laughs> you up at 5 30 in the morning because he doesn't have any food in his bowl and he'll sit there and if he doesn't wake you up with his meows he then looks for whatever in the room is paper and starts ripping it and you know <laughs> okay you have to get up you hear paper ripping and the things you're thinking is it my checkbook is it that my birth certificate what the hell is this cat eating you know so yeah he's the biggest asshole of all to wake people up at 5 30 in the morning because he wants cat. and my dog's probably to blame for it he probably eats the cat food so the cat you know starves yeah you know no, cat, cat dog <laughs> rivalry all right so this next article um, it's called emissions. What goes in must come out. And Henrik, I was going to let you kind of take over for this. You wanted me to bring this to everyone's attention and I'm glad you did. It's a great read. If I move too fast, guys, I'll leave the description in the link. That way you can check it out after the show, but, uh, go ahead and tell me what, uh, what you oh, saw. Yes. I think article. everybody should read the, this article for themselves because, uh, as, as they say in the article, uh, this is just some of the things what is coming out of a tailpipe of a car, you know, uh, and a little of this is CO2. And the only thing we hear about is the CO2. But right. if you look at all those things, they are so poisoning, you know, and there's an, uh, just a, Two days ago, there's a new uh, report out in Denmark that are telling that uh, uh, the dust particle from uh, from 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 cars and buses and trucks, you know, from from the the tire, you know, they produce uh, a lot of uh, particles, and so do the brakes. And uh, all those particles, they are sitting in your clothes, so you are taking them home with you. And especially people who are using the subway. You know, there are so many particles right. down in these areas and people are getting so sick. And I get sick when people are mentioning eh, that's because of the global warming and, and all the pollution uh, are causing the, the global warming. And that has nothing to do with each other. You know, if you take the CO2 out of this re report, well, the CO2 is not a pollution, if you ask me. But all the other things, you know, children all over the world are getting uh, lung cancer yes. you know even if they have pa parents that have never been smoking i mean that is so crazy you know all these particles are making people so so sick and then when you're when you are going in the city you know people are walking around you know boo hoo is so hot in the city uh, and not in the country well i know you have just passed 10 or 20 tourist buses you know uh, holding with the engine going you know 
uh, that is, uh, and we are getting more and more people in all the cities, uh, and more and more people, well, that means more and more cars and more and more houses. So, of course, there will be uh, a lot more heat in the cities, you know, and you can call that a man-made uh, in some way, uh, because that uh, heat cannot just escape. So, uh, of course, it would feel a lot hotter in the cities in the summers, you know, and, and I think we all have some responsible. Uh, I know it's so difficult to say this because the truth always hurt and people hate me when I say it, but we have to get off uh, uh, not driving cars and everything. And I know we cannot just go back to the horses and make uh, uh, smoke signals like uh, the Indians did, you know, but, but we, we got to do something, you know, because I see the pollution as a very big problem. Uh, even bigger than uh, the grand solar minimum. And those two things combined, I think in about 200 years' times, I don't think we are so many people left on the earth. You know, I'm counting the elements of that are in the exhaust that they're talking about, and you're right. The the one that I don't find dangerous is the CO2 because we know and NASA has proven that it is a greening effect and not a pollutant. It's actually plant food. Um, but I'm with you because I, I am not a proponent of man-made global warming, but I do believe that man does have something to do with the air pollution, the air quality. And you're right. There's more and more children getting uh, blood type cancers lung cancers um the other day i went and got my eyes checked at a local urgent care and the doctor wanted to make sure that uh, he wasn't missing anything he was actually just going to check me out with his little light check my eyes and all that and then he says you know what i've seen some weird stuff lately i'm gonna go ahead and order a cat scan an ultrasound and this was just because i saw some you know dark splotches in my vision one morning so if a doctor in emergency rooms and urgent cares are, you know, going a little bit further to test because they've seen some weird stuff lately, um, I believe, and like you believe, that, you know, man-made pollution has everything to do with the quality of life and especially with the quality of air we breathe. Look at China. Yeah. And you also got to remember that every day we are getting more people on the earth and those people, they want a new phone. They want the tablet, they want the television, they want the car, you know. And, and the poorest people in, in some places in the world, they don't have clean water, they don't have good food, but God damn it, they got a cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so weird. Oh, yeah, don't get and me started so on wrong. that. And it's so wrong uh, somehow, you know. I know they got to have, uh, why should they not have what we have? But sure. we all got, and But the biggest problem is uh, that all the powers of B, they should be the first to say, okay, we have a problem. I will not have a car. I will not have four houses. I will have uh, a bicycle maybe and an electric car and a little house. Why is it that every time someone is coming to power, they, they have automatically have got to have a bigger car, bigger house? You know what I mean? A jet plane and what do we have? Well, Mari uh, brought up another point too when we were talking about pollution. What did you say, Mari? What drives me crazy is the total cognitive dissonance on EMF pollution. You know, we're so accepting that there's Wi-Fi, cell towers, and all that. There's proven scientific data that shows this is really bad for everyone's health. It causes anxiety, restlessness, sleep disorders, uh, nausea, you know, tinnitus. Um, all kinds of issues, but we gladly accept it because it connects us to the, you know, world, the interweb. And, you know, it's look, if I'm sure if you pull up your Wi-Fi and see how many networks you're connected to, I'm looking at right now, you know, if it pulled up the full list, you're talking, I bet you at least 20 networks just right there, you know, sort of beaming in the head. You got your own home network and then you got your cell phone and everyone else's cell phone and then the cell towers it's a lot of you know pollution people don't think about but gladly use and accept and create 
How do you escape from that? Once, you know, the reports start coming out, your Wi-Fi is killing you. Your cell phone, you know, is, is going to give you tumors and all that. Like, it makes me worry. Yeah. Well, I already, I'm going to tell you something right now. And you really got my attention about this too. I really didn't pay attention to the EMF side of this. You know, I'm thinking, eh, you know, I don't know a lot about this, but frequency and stuff like that makes sense. Uh, Mari's right. And the Wi-Fi, I wonder, because we do have powerful Wi-Fi, I wonder if that's why I've had increased, you know, ear ringing since I've been in, you know, since I've been in Buffalo, I've never noticed the ringing in my ears so bad, well, but we're also close quarters. So like you said, we've got Billy Bob's internet and Susie Joe's internet behind us and Ralphie Ralph on the left and across the street. We here in Buffalo have windmill farms. And if you do your research on the effects of human health with windmill farms, it really messes people up. It's sound, vibration, frequency, and there's too many unknowns, not enough research. And when you do research what is happening to these families near these wind farms, and we have, I mean, how many miles do you think that oh, wind farms from us? I can, I can hear it from here at night. I'm glad I can't. It's awful. Well, yeah, and I totally, totally agree with what you're saying. And, and not so far from where I live, we have some uh, power lines hanging. And uh, when we choose to go that way with dogs, you know, and even if not thinking about it, then suddenly I think, oh, why, why does my hurt, my head hurt so much, yeah. you know, and then, oh, we are under the power lines. Okay. And it's yeah. almost every time, you know. I'm glad you brought this article to the attention of us and everybody else because. I feel the same way you do about the pollution. It's one thing about CO2 is if it's polluting or not, and it's not. We know that. But, you know, you bring an article that highlights some of the stuff that is being put in the air. And this stuff isn't causing warming, but it's causing other official health problems. And that, to me, is a concern. So, you know, there there's nothing wrong with having clean energy. There's nothing wrong with going green if it's going to be clean as well. And we talked about this a few days ago too, how uh, the solar the solar panel waste, once they're at the end of their life and the way they dispose of these things, they burn these things, they melt them down and the toxic fumes from the plastics, they, they do this so they can get the copper out of this because of course here, copper is worth a lot of money. Um, in fact, I don't know about what uh, how big it is in your country, but back home where I'm from in Southwest Ohio, um, it was such a problem where people were uh, stealing copper from abandoned houses and they actually had to pass legislation where you have to have some kind of a business license now to scrap copper because there's been so many theft, so many people just illegally taking these copper pipes out of these homes. Um, oh, yes. But uh, in Denmark, it's not uh, the houses uh, they are doing it from. It's from the train. Oh, wow. Uh, or the power lines uh, above the train, you know. Uh, they are stealing, so the train, uh, a lot of times, uh, well, we have a problem because we cannot drive because they have been stealing the cover. <laughs> so, uh, yes, it's a very big problem or has been. I don't think it's so big problem anymore because they have made the rules. You were just uh, mentioned you have over there. We have the same rules in Denmark. You cannot just go uh, scrap it now because uh, wow. then it would be reported, you know. That's that's crazy. I, you know, the, here I thought that was just a local incident, but to hear it's happening across the pond, that uh, must be a serious issue everywhere. So impressive. I think so. And you, you got to remember that uh, there are so many uh, mines around the world, you know, yeah. gold and copper and all that is making so much pollution when they are making it very, very much pollution. That's true. Well, thanks again for bringing that to our attention. And we'll go back to a couple more. Um, weather here articles but uh like i said I, I you know we still have an issue in our environment as far as dirty air goes and dirty water so i still believe that man does contribute when it comes to pollution in the air but not when it comes to climate yeah, uh exactly. i know that, yeah what was you saying I, i'm just agree oh yeah I, i'm sure there's a lot of global warmest nuts out there who would disagree but um you know, that's, yeah. that's, their, that's their problem. Anyway, a yeah. uh, widespread outbreak of severe weather thunderstorms is threatening parts of the U central United States, bringing the risk of damaging winds and tornadoes into Friday night. That's tonight. Uh, residents from western North Dakota to northwestern Missouri should be prepared for continuous lightning, 
falling trees, power outages, flash flooding. The greatest risk of severe weather will begin in central Nebraska. Thunderstorms will eventually, um, looks like they're talking about winds being over 70 miles per hour. This may develop into a, a long-lived thunderstorm complex known as a Dara Echo. And normally those have more of a well okay i see the bow now on the bottom one here if you look right here where mitchell is and haran you start to see that cell starting to bow out a little bit also right behind it uh also starting to bow a little bit too so these storms um can bring straight line winds that will feel like tornadic activity uh living in ohio we've had these a couple different times in southwest ohio now, I'm not sure if they have these out here in the Northeast, but if so, you would know it. Uh, 20,000 lightning strikes across Nebraska today and South Central Dakota just in the past five hours. And there's our thunderbolt lightning here with the purplish uh, background. That is the presence of highly charged particles. And here are some updates, videos from as of 7.15 earlier tonight. We had some hail reports. Seven point, or I'm sorry, two and a half in Ainsworth, uh, Nebraska, 1.75 in Newell, South Dakota. Uh, everybody, it looks like they got at least a, an, an inch and three quarter diameter of hail. And looks like South Dakota, North Dakota coming on top with wind gusts topping 75 miles an hour. Brockway, Montana also had 68. So we're taking a look at all these, are all severe thunderstorm warnings in the red boxes. And this was, I think, what this was as 639. So this is old news here. We'll leave the link in the description. And also wanted to bring this up real quick. Or is it this one? No, it's this one first. Okay. Southeast to get a break from storms as cooler, drier weather arrives early next week. And that is the case for sure, as here in the Buffalo area, as I mentioned earlier, we will see temperatures plummet back into the 60s. Uh, following locally heavy gusty showers and thunderstorms this weekend, much of the southeastern United States can expect a break from the, in a less humid air and rain-free weather for the next week. To say that May has been a wet month would be an understatement with rainfall of two to five times of that of the average. Uh, 16 inches in Miami, 14 in Asheville, North Carolina, and the Key West of Florida also recorded 10 inches in Charlottesville. There is good news for those who need a break for cleanup after incidents of flooding, outdoor projects, or just planning a trip to the beach or the mountains. The change in the weather pattern will allow drier and cooler air to sweep in southeastward from the northern plains. Multiple days of sunshine, low humidity are in store for the Tennessee Valley to much of the southern Atlantic coast. Let me tell you, uh, I lived in the southern Tennessee and Manchester, Tennessee, and it is hot and humid right now. From June all the way to the end of August, your air conditioner in the month of July does not shut off. And the crazy part is, for those of you who live in, like, say, Ohio or the Northeast, or um, you have air conditioning units on the side of your homes that are a certain size. When you live in the South, like Georgia and Southern Tennessee and Alabama and Mississippi and Louisiana, Missouri and Arkansas, you have these really big commercial size air compressor units on the side of your house. And they're like three times the size of a normal residential uh, outside fan. So uh, those those are huge energy suckers. And I, I feel bad for people who have to run any AC for that long a time. But look at this cooler air. This is next week. The Northeast. Now, this was predicted. Um, Judah Cohen does really great work on the uh, the blocking patterns. And he has been talking about some, now, I don't know what this means, seasonably cool to seasonably cooler kind of weather. Again, I guess he's just trying to say in for June, the low 60s is not that uncommon for the Northeast. But I beg to differ. The folks here in this part of the country are definitely going to feel that this early. Normally, they're used to at least low 80s by now. Am I not right? I mean... This week was a little extreme hot. We were in the mid 80s and lower 90s, but the humidity, yeah. So, what are you guys gonna? You guys are gonna get a break like this over there anytime soon, or you guys are just gonna be hotter and shit? 
uh, as long as we can see it's uh, getting hot it's getting a little bit down in, in the next week but uh, still pretty hot i think uh, but i'm just looking for some rain you know because you yeah. have to water in your garden every day is so bone dry you know mm. that's it's hard not like a, yeah. it's not like uh, in the uh, new finland labrador you know the, the iceberg season is uh, started there and normally you will see about 40 to 50 icebergs there but there are only 10 icebergs so it's a very very uh, slowly start and uh, this guy you know called the uh, skipper bob bartless says i don't think there will uh, uh, i i'm <coughs> sorry he says i don't think uh, it's because of cooling he thinks it's because of global warming <laughs> and he thinks that there will be no iceberg back in uh, less than 50 years and he says uh, for certain there will not exist, exist any uh, icebergs in the future and he said that to the weather channel uh, uh sorry to the weather network i mean what what is he on about <laughs> i'm telling you um you know they're not allowed to talk about anything that's outside the textbooks that's what it feels like weather channel weather nation uh they all blame this cooler weather on global warming you know back when we had the sudden atmospheric warming in the north arctic and how everyone was racing to the headlines saying how that you know temperatures of the arctic are 45 degrees below average so everybody automatically said oh it's 45 degrees in the arctic right now there's puddles instead of ice and that's not the case 45 degrees above average could have still been 15 degrees you know fahrenheit which is well below freezing and yes. it got blown out of proportion big time this winter um but we've definitely seen some uh pattern changes this one looks familiar from the winter uh, we were cool or cold i should say in the northeast and northwest all year long and even parts of the south got to see that cooler weather as well and speaking of cooler weather because of the cooler weather uh, noaa has adjusted their forecast and i'm not going to read the whole thing here but they believe now um that they're going to see an average amount of storms. They do not anticipate a significant El Nino during 2018 hurricane season. That most of North Atlantic has continued to anomalously cool over the past two months. This has everything to do with why they're changing their tune right now. And I will show you that quickly as well. Uh, this is the anomaly graph for the North Atlantic. As you see, we had a pretty remarkable drop back in March of about 25, 28th of the month, and it was right around the 0.5 value. And right now, we have seen a steady decline as it peaked back up almost to uh, above five above the baseline. We have dropped a full degree Celsius, 1.1 degree Celsius since May 4th. So in less than 30 days, we've lost 1.1 degrees Celsius in the North Atlantic. And while I'm mentioning this, um, I, I should have brought the um, the link with me on the show. I can share it, though, um, after the show on the community post for YouTube. But uh, the Star Man had an article on his website that talks about the situation in the North Atlantic. And so when I saw this article today, on what's up with that and tell me that they're gonna you know scale back their their uh, hurricane forecast that came no surprise to me because also not only did we have the anomaly in the north atlantic to talk about but the latest from dr roy spencer came out guys and we dropped again now only a 0 0.03 degrees celsius but as you can see, we have dropped 0 0.70 degrees Celsius since February of 2016. So we have almost steadily declined, lost a full degree Celsius in just the last two years. Um, I don't see another area that had a steeper climb on this map. Maybe, maybe the 90, 99 peak to the uh, 2000 and 
two thousand drop, maybe. But other than that, and no no signs does it show either, thanks to that um, that North Atlantic current being a factor. I believe the Southern Hemisphere, uh, thanks to the Starman as well in the chat, showing some uh, numbers, Northern Hemisphere, that anomaly was at a plus 0.40, and the Southern Hemisphere was at a negative uh, 0.05. So that's probably where we get our global lower no anomaly temperature, of the, the plus 0 0.18. And my apologies, uh, Rob, I just remembered, I was totally going to bring a bunch of stuff into the, I forgot a ton of links that Rob actually left in the, um, yeah, I, I just totally remember that. I'm so sorry, but Rob's keeping me abreast on the volcano situation as well, which that brings me to my next question. Is it possible, Henrik, that we're seeing these lower global temperatures now? I mean, look at all the volcanoes. You know, Rob showed me five today. One has a 30,000 feet explosion. A few others had like 15, 18 to 20,000. Uh, it's possible with all of this particulates in the atmosphere that's reflecting what little TSI we are getting on this planet. Oh, yes. Uh, that is very possible, I think. Uh, and I think that in the next couple of, of months, the will show some result because uh, already now you know you can see the the, the south african weather service yes they are out uh, a warn about there would be a cold uh, this week starting today uh, and in the response they have sent out a press release warning against the sign of symptoms of hyperthermia to all the people you know uh, the temperature uh, will uh, not be uh, uh, very high, you know, it's South Africa, about three degrees Celsius, you know, and that's living a lot of people there. Wow. You know, and I don't think that has anything to do exactly with the volcanoes, but, you, you know, you've got to do something, as you're saying, it's, it's, it's hanging in the atmosphere, you know, yeah. and, uh, and, and it's uh, just producing and producing and producing, you know, and well, it's got to do something. Yeah. It, like I said, you know, I, I know we have on the average around 30 volcanoes erupting at one particular time. But, you know, Popocatelli was erupted today. Um, one I can't pronounce, it starts with the S, was erupting. And then we had, of course, Merapi. We still have Kilauea that's uh, a big event right now. So, I mean, earthquake swarms around other volcanoes that Rob was talking to me about the other day that we haven't seen erupt in 5,000 years. So, I mean... To me, all of this with the North Atlantic anomaly right now and now this global atmos lower atmosphere, and I think everything that we've talked about tonight all plays a factor into what we're looking at, what we're witnessing right now. Um, and as long as I've witnessed this graph, which hasn't been very long, obviously, since 16, I haven't seen uh, readings this low before. Uh, we got pretty close last June when it dropped to... Uh, plus 0 0.21 above baseline but then we jump back up into the 40s by august and then surprisingly i thought october was going to be a chilly month and we jumped from the values of uh, 0.43 all the way up to 0.63 above baseline uh, but since october rapidly uh, we have lost now around 50 degrees celsius and almost a full degree in two years so i think we've seen a, a sharper decline for sure, from 2017 to present. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind we've seen a very sharp decline. And I think that's what worries a lot of people that follow the, the solar minimums, the grand solar minimums and the solar cycles, because what they're talking about, this, this sharp decline, these quick drops, that's what they're worried about. And they're happening quicker and faster than what they're predicting as well. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, just before we was getting on here, uh, I said uh, 2050 had a video out with uh, Joe Bastardi. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and the other guy, I, I won't mention. <laughs> 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 and uh, and uh, I don't know if it was uh, an older video. I, I didn't know to respond and ask him, you know, because they were talking about a new report that was coming out soon. Everybody was scared about uh 
and of course that has something to do with the sunspots uh, and the sun cycles. So I'm just uh, curious, you know, do you know anything about uh, a report that is coming out soon that all the fans of the global warming are in panic over? Um, no, I haven't, but I, I have seen predictions of sunspots where we're supposedly not going to... Now, this is just one report that I saw, but apparently from the month of June through April, we're not supposed to see any sunspots, which already that's not true as we're still hanging on to AR-2712. But what was the report yeah. supposedly about? Yeah, I didn't know, uh, see it all, you know, because it was just before we were getting on. So I had only oh. one ear on, but uh, I was just, uh, I have to see it afterwards, you know, for the... Uh, so if if uh, if Rob got time, I know he's got a lot of hands and a lot of ears and a lot of eyes. You know he can do two things at the same time. So okay. it's uh, I said twenty fifty. Come on, quickly. <laughs> he, he, Rob is a wizard when it comes to information. Um, I you know I know he doesn't like the whole public attention thing, and I'm not trying to do that. But he real him and Starman and yourself and Mari with when it comes to helping with research, the the four the. Wait, one, two, three. Yep, yeah, four of you guys really do a good job. And I couldn't do this. These broadcasts, these live shows, I couldn't do this without your guys' help. So um, I really appreciate everybody that contributes and our subs. I mean, they're also looking out for us. We've gotten comments with links to information that maybe I wasn't aware of before, but um, have become aware of now thanks to my subs. So, you know, I don't claim to be an expert on this. Um, I am very intrigued. I love what we do here at this channel. I have a passion for weather anyway. And, you know, when we're talking about things that are going to affect our children and our, our grandchildren, um, that gets my attention. And that's what makes me so serious about trying to educate people. And, you know, when I have people like Henrik on who want to talk about air pollution and what really is pollution and not CO2 being pollution, you know, that the more and more we drive this, the more people are going to start hearing this. It's going to be the new norm. It should be logical science, but I understand mainstream media doesn't believe in logical science. They just believe in whatever gets them grant money and uh, sells the fear because it's all about keeping the vibrations down. But yeah, I wanted it's to all about keeping the money, uh, money rolling, you know, because uh, it's so insane that they are blaming so many things. Uh, there are not. Uh, I don't even know what to say. You know, I get so angry sometimes at, at the powers that be. You know, like I said, uh, one show or two shows ago, if they really knew there was something wrong, they would do something about it. You know, but they are not doing crap, and and, and they are not doing anything about the pollution either. You know, that's double crap. You know, I, I hate to be gloomy like this, but. You know, many of you have been with the channel for a long time. Um, Lee had had several conversations with me about how the reason why you don't see these governments trying to put a plan together is because th there's governments that either don't believe in the science of the solar minimum or there's governments who believe in that science and they understand the possibility of how bad it could get. and the way he explained it to me was that that the government would not be prepared for the scale of famine and food uh, disruption and crop loss that, you know, there is that possibility where, it, you know, one season is enough if it's bad enough worldwide. And I don't know about you, but every day that I read these headlines that those words reverberate in my head because when you look at the headlines and we come on and do these shows and we're talking about flash floods in Germany and Turkey and Iran and India and France and, you know, London, United States, it's not isolated to any part of the globe. It's everywhere, everywhere. Flash floods, damaging crops, you know, people going bankrupt over one storm. Areas of the world yeah, and getting the chase is so quickly, you know, it could come anywhere in the world uh, the weather can change at any time and so yeah. you know the best thing that we can say here is that educate yourself learn to grow indoors learn to be self-sufficient learn how to do the basics 
Um, the homesteading stuff, I do apologize to our Patreon fellows, our followers out there. We will be getting more content about that. But there's things in the homesteading that we want to cover that might be just basic. But for some out there, it could come in handy. Like, hey, I remember hearing about this in this video on how to make a solar, a portable a solar water heater. And it could be just enough to warm the water to take, you know, what they would call a whore's bath. You know, you're standing over a bucket of warm water and washing the essentials. You know, it's not going to be a nice hot bath, but it's, but it's, it's good. It's good to have. It's Friday's night. Yeah. And, and Henrik has been too polite tonight. So <laughs> I had to say the first bad word, I guess. <laughs> well, actually, one of my neighbors, uh, he has an outdoor bath he uses in uh, in the summer where he has some uh, pipes lying around the, under the, the soil, you know, so he can take bath uh, outside naked. And uh, he do that uh, a lot, I think. It's not like I'm peeping, you know. <laughs> no, no, no. You can't help it. You just <laughs> it's, just, it it's just to tell people, you know, that you can do that and save a lot of money because when it is uh, hot and heat, you know, water in pipes, they, they, they keep the heat the whole day, you know. That's true. I mean, you got a point there, you know. I, I guess uh, you can do it. You got a privacy fence and, you know, just bathe naked out in the warm sun. Yeah, I point. wish I had the nerve to do it, but again, I'm a neurotic, you know, so uh, I'm not doing so many things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to show a little bit of this weather real quick, and then uh, I believe Henrik owes me a story that's going to beat last week's um, debacle of erections and hunger. But let's get in a little bit of uh, <laughs> the weather map here. We're seeing that severe weather that's over the northern plains in the Midwest uh, heading into Iowa, Missouri. And this is Saturday through the weekend. So very intense line of storms moving through that area. There we go. Internet's moving along just fine. And looking at the south, you guys will develop some chance for showers. North Carolina, Washington, D.C. area. Um, some action coming in. Actually, this is interesting. Um so we have a little bit of a system right here off the coast of North Carolina and Virginia. And if you notice, the winds are coming in from the east. Now, this is Sunday going into Monday. I want to move it just a little bit farther. But as you notice, the front that is behind here in western New York, as it passes through on Monday, it gives way and this easterly wind finally does make its way into the northeast rotates cooler air back down into western new york and this part of the region which is why we're going to see the lower 60s so i just kind of noticed that watching as we were talking watching the radar here we are getting some action that's coming east to west and of course cooler weather for next week compared to this week we were looking at highs in the upper 80s and lower 90s next week we're talking about 60s and 70s and as i move this windy forecast all the way through the first week of june i gotta say this is the driest that i've seen our forecast in some quite time now that will change probably when i show the gfs the gfs really shows a lot more sometimes i think it over but we do see a little bit of uptick in moisture towards the, uh, the 10th of June. But really, not a lot of action. Now, <clears throat> there is a storm that we are watching that's in the Gulf. Let me go ahead and pull that up real quick. Oh, what did I do with it? Well, crap. I'm just going to blame it on Henrik. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now it's getting light in Denmark. The clock is uh, four. Is it four? It's so late. You know what? It's only four thirty. Forget about oh. the forget about the GFS. My goodness. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and cap it no, off. No, 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 no. Oh, no, you no, got no, my. No. That's right. You got my story. So you have the you have the platform now, Henrik. Oh my God! Now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's not so funny as the old. I think it's just because you know, uh, I was actually the the first guy in in Denmark to have a, a weatherman uh, live on the the radio, 
and uh, this goes uh, back to 1988, I think. Uh, and, uh, you know, nowadays everything is so easy when you are making radio or when we are making these programs, you know, you have a tablet or a computer or a phone. But, you know, back in those days, we got to make uh, with simple tools, you know, we, you even remember cassette tapes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were making uh, homemade commercials uh, on on those things. You know, we have two uh, record players. uh and, and we didn't have much and one phone, you know. And then uh, we had this old water tower uh, in, in the city, you know. And up uh, on the top of that tower, um, all the, the broadcasting uh, systems were, were standing, you know. And it was only authorized people who were <coughs> allowed up there, of course, because you might not broadcasting with more <coughs> hurts than, than other, you know, because then you will could be here a, a long, long way, you know. So um, one of the, the guys, not me, not me, they were going up in the, the water tower uh, at some point and uh, push some buttons here and some buttons there. And not a, not a lot, but just enough so people in Sweden could hear us, you know. <laughs> and uh, that was good. <laughs> but then uh, uh, it, it, it's not so funny that I was the first guy in Denmark to to actually have a weather guy on on the phone you know it was a pure accident because we were having those papers uh, in in Denmark uh, we are calling um, format as papers uh, uh, early morning papers we were the first in Denmark to have those papers so a lot of listeners were depending on having the news before uh, all the others you know but then one day the papers were not coming and I didn't know why so I was just telling my boss you know well, I'm going to call the DMI, you know. And he was lost, just looking at me and say, are you crazy? They don't have time for you. <laughs> so I called him, you know, say, hello, it's Henrik, you know. And then, yeah, of course, we will be on, you know. And after I did that, it was a big success. Everybody was was uh, doing the things, called them, you know. So I, I started a, a little uh, trend back then. Unfortunately, now I will say... Uh, so, but it was a, a very great time uh, back in the days to to make a nice. radio. I think uh, I remember my my boss. He had a birthday, and I was uh, making mo- morning radio every morning, uh, Monday to Friday from six to nine. You know, that's three hours morning radio. That's a lot of radio. Uh, so I I had to get up early in the night. I was getting up at three at night in the clock and uh, down on my bicycle to the radio and do everything ready. And then on my boss's birthday. I was coming into the studio, you know, and there have been burglars. There was nothing in the studio. It was empty, you know. Oh. I was just standing. Is this a joke or what? And then, you know, I had to call my boss, you know. Hello, Rene. Uh, I'm sorry to wake you up, you know, but uh, somebody have uh, been burgling. Uh, everything is gone in the studio. Oh. And it was his birthday, you know. So he thought, you know, ha ha. He was just laughing. Yeah, yeah. Heinrich, right. I'm coming now. And he thought it was a surprise party we were holding for him, you know. <laughs> but uh, it was not a surprise party. <laughs> oh, this was about three and four o'clock in the morning, and you, know, uh, and we had two hours to get new equipment. And uh, you know, I was on live six o'clock. Oh, we held friends and friends and friends's friends, you know. But it was a very good time, and I just, I think radio today, you know. I, today I'm more I, I like uh, talk radio. I don't like uh, music radio anymore. Uh, not in Denmark because you know all the stations are playing the same songs every day. You know, and it's like, what happened to to pick a good old song? You know, they are all playing the same pop music. You know, and that's just not for me. No, I, I you're right, and I listen to um, some old classic stuff I found on YouTube uh, when I was a child. I grew up listening to 700 WLW. It's a radio station out of Cincinnati, Ohio. They're deemed the big one because they have uh, 50,000 watts of antenna power. And you could get WLW all the way in Columbus, Ohio. And that's not that's not normal. Uh, normally, a radio station fades out after about an hour of worth of travel. But um, they had a lot of... Um, their DJs were amazing from morning all the way to evening. 
And, you know, you got your morning traffic guy who brings up the headlines in the morning. Then your midday guy, he's a little bit more opinionated. And then your afternoon guys is all sports and all that. And then evening is more sports talk. And then nine o'clock, it was like the Jerry Springer of talk radio would come on. And you don't find those anymore. Uh, It's almost like a lot of these radio personalities are a bunch of blowhards and they want to stand on top of a soapbox and act like they're yeah, holier than thou. They always talk about themselves, you know, it's yeah. me, 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 blah, 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 blah. You know, when I was a radio guy, you know, I was uh, like, you know, well, if I want to play stairways to heaven now, where well, you got to hear it, you know, and you got to hear it full, you know, today you cannot hear a song that lasts more than three minutes, you know, and yeah. there are so much music that, that lasts, you, you know, I like uh, long music. Uh, I don't want to... Uh, yeah, you know, if you're out in your bike, it's, it's nice to have a piece of music who are lasting 20 minutes. <laughs> I, you know, I the older music I listen to, the rock, the, old, the older rock, um, and some of the stuff up until the 90s, but you're right, they don't make songs that last more than three and a half minutes. Uh, I think, you know, Zeppelin and Pink Floyd and a lot of those other bands, they could take a song and turn it into 26 minutes because they were musicians they were the uh, master of their craft. They would perform for an audience. And so my favorite part about going to concerts was that maybe I got to hear my favorite song and they jammed on it a little bit longer than what they normally did. But you're right. Radio, talk radio, music. I mean, you could say we're getting older, but I don't think so. And I think this just goes back to um, where we are as a society I don't mean to be negative, but you brought something to my mind about where we are as a society when it comes to music and stuff like yeah. that. Um, you know, I actually once played a, a Prince number in the radio from a, a video cassette. Uh, it was Purple Rain, and I think it lasted uh, for 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it was so was, crazy. <laughs> I, uh, I remember one time um, I was at a, a bar and having a few drinks and a friend of mine, they really liked the song by Pink Floyd. It's off one of the very rare Adam. It's called Adam Hart mother. And the very first song is called Adam Hart mother. And it's 20 minutes long. And for me as a Pink Floyd fan, it's almost like being in a time machine from day one, what Floyd sounded like all the way to the future. And this, this song was made in the sixties. So, you know, you're thinking, well, how do they know what they're going to sound like in the future? Well, I'm telling you, this song has it all. And it's 20 minutes long, but it's very, very, very for the hardcore Floyd fans. And I remember one time um, we played this song at a bar and the bartender got three minutes into it and skipped the song because he couldn't stand it because it wasn't, you know, your typical pop country or your pop music. So we went over to the jukebox with a $20 bill and played $20 worth of that 20 minute song. And I bet you it probably took that bartender a good. 15 minutes to cycle through how many times we played that song, you know, just because <laughs> again, you know, screw your popularity. We paid money to hear this song, but you know, you're right. These days people are, uh, it's all about self gratification, how quick you can get it. Um, yeah. Nobody and works now, you're talking, uh, now you're talking about uh, pink Floyd. Yeah. I, I know, you know, the, the song, uh, keep talking. And there are so many live versions out of, uh, especially that number, Keep Talking. Yep. Uh, and and uh, in some of the versions, you know, he has like a, a wow wow. <laughs> uh, yes. and it sounds like God, you know. I mean, it, 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 it's God in my ears when he uses that wow wow. Uh, and I don't know how he's doing it, you know, but you got to hear it. Everybody, keep talking. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, listen, I, I think we're going to wrap it up for tonight, but Henrik, it's always been a pleasure bringing you on every Friday night. Thank you for joining me tonight again. You're so welcome. Amari, again, thank you for help producing the show and your little tidbit. You helped out with the EMF thing, you know, so, but thanks for, uh, for helping out like you always do. Always a pleasure, Jake. All right, guys. That's Hi, gonna Mari. Do it. Hi, Mari. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to do it for us tonight. Thank you for turning into the Grand Solar Minimum channel. We'll be back on the air tomorrow night and then again starting on, off the work week on Monday at 930 Eastern Time. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. We'll talk soon.